Picking up from where we left off, we're now ready to begin going through some of these comments. So in our horizontal movement section, in the check open position, we need to begin looking around to see if there is a wall in the way. So the first thing we'll do is come check object. It will test for an object wall. Set it to not, because we only want to add these numbers if there is not a wall in the way. And this first one is going to be an x plus h speed y of y. So this is going to be checking to see if there's a wall in front of the ghost. And since we're using h speed, and h speed can be positive or negative, it will essentially look for a wall either on the left or the right, depending on which direction the ghost is going in. So if that is the case, we then want to set our variable which way. And based on what I said in the previous video, I'm going to give this a value of 3. And I want to set relative so it adds it to the total. We'll then go ahead and select these two, copy them, and paste. So now we have two more. We'll open the second one, and this will check to see if there is not a wall beneath the ghost. So let's turn this to x equals x, y is y plus ghost underscore speed. When we are adding on the y-axis, that is going down. So we need to change this number from a value of 3 to 1. Then we'll open this third check object, and we will set this to an x of x, a y of y minus ghost speed. And we will set that variable to 5. So now that we have a total for our which way variable, we'll come down here and check which way. The first one will be forward. So let's test for a variable. We will test which underscore way being equal to 3. Because if only the forward way is available, then we should have the total of 3. Now if only the forward direction is available, we don't really have to do anything, because we're already going in that direction. But what I am going to do is come over here to the Control tab, and I'm going to select this Exit Event action, the circle with the X in it. Drag that underneath. Now, Game Maker will go through all of the actions in an event, even if it's not using them. When we tell it to exit this event, that basically means that as soon as Game Maker gets to that point, it will stop reading the rest of them and just hop out of the event. We don't really need to worry about that too much, but since this is a step event, it'll just come back and read it through the next step. But we are preventing Game Maker from reading through code that it doesn't need to. Okay, so now that that's done, let's come down to the down section. We'll go ahead and test for variable. Test for which way being equal to 1. If that is the case, then we want to set variable. We will set direction to 270. We also want it to exit the event. And to make sure that both of these happen, only when this condition is met, we'll put some blocks around it. And so now it looks like that. Our up actions are going to be similar, so we'll just go ahead and copy all of this, paste it. And so now in the up section, we need to make sure that the which way is set to a value of 5, and we'll change the direction to 90. So now we'll move to the forward and down section bring in a test variable, test for which way being equal to 4, drag some blocks in, and now we have two directions, so we're going to have to randomly choose one. We'll come over to test chance, leave it to a size of 2, we'll go ahead and set variable, the first 50 percent chance we will set the direction to 270, so it goes down, and the other 50% chance it'll go forward. But just like we did with the which way being equal to 3, we can really just leave that alone, because it'll continue going forward. So we'll just add an exit event. Now this one in particular is special, 
because we need to also prevent the ghost from going down back into the ghost house. So if it is going to go down, we'd better make sure that there's not a barrier in the way first. So I'm going to take these blocks and surround the setting direction set to 270, and then above it I'm going to drag a check object. We're going to check and see if there is an object barrier set to not with an X of X and a Y, Y plus ghost speed. So now it will only go down if there's not a barrier beneath it. So now we'll come to the forward and up. We'll test for a variable. Test for which way being equal to 8. Drag some blocks. And this is going to be very similar to the 4. So we'll go ahead and just select the 1 out of 2 chance the set variable direction and the exit event. Copy those and then paste them inside the blocks of the 8. However, we don't want it going down, we want it going up, so we'll change this 270 into 90 and the other 50% of the time we'll just keep going straight forward so we don't have to worry about it. This is going to work pretty similar for our up and down, so we'll go ahead and select all of these using control click and then we'll copy and paste. So in the up and down we will have a value of 6 and on a 50% chance we'll go ahead and copy this set variable, paste it. We'll change this first one to 270, slip an else in between and so now 50% of the time it'll go down 50% of the time it'll go up. The next part is going to be a little bit tricky because we have to randomly choose between three options. So what we'll do first is see if we go forward or if we turn and then we'll see if we turn do we go up or down. So let's bring in a test variable. Test for which way being equal to 9. Bring in blocks. First we'll do a 50-50 on whether it goes straight forward, so we'll bring in a test chance, sides of 2, and we'll just have it go straight forward, so we'll exit the event. Otherwise we need to test for up or down, so we'll bring in else, bring in some more blocks, do another test chance, sides of 2, on the first 50%, bring in a variable, set this to direction, equal to 90, else, set variable, set direction equal to 270, and then we'll have it exit the event. So to review, when it comes to a three-way intersection we'll have a total of 9, so first we check to see if we just go forward, otherwise we turn, and then we have to determine do we go up or do we go down. And then we need to turn the ghost around if there isn't an opening. So we'll test variable, set which way equal to zero, bring in some blocks, we'll set a variable, and this will be direction to a value of 180 relative. So we'll essentially add 180 to its current direction, we'll send it backwards. And then we want to exit the event. So, now we've got this big long list of actions, but if you kept it organized you should at least be able to know what is going on. However, now we need to set this up for our vertical movement, so I'm just going to come select everything, and then using the control click I'm going to deselect the bottom four actions, come up to the top, and deselect everything down to our check open position then going to copy everything else, come all the way down, and with the end all comment selected, I'm going to paste. And so now underneath our vertical movement, we should have all of those actions in again. We do, however, need to make some changes. Since we're moving vertically instead of up and down, we need to check for lefts and rights. So let's go to our check open position, and in this first action, instead of x plus h speed, we need this to be y plus 
vSpeed. We can keep that value to 3, choose the second one, and instead of a Y plus ghost speed, I'll just select this, cut it, and paste it, and now we have X plus ghost speed, which will send it to the right. So right will now have a value of 1. Select the third check position, and instead of a Y minus ghost speed, we will have X minus ghost speed, which is to the left, and so now left has a value of 5. So let's come down here. Forward is still equal to 3, so that's fine. But 1, in this case, is not down. It is right. And as such, we need to change the direction from 270 to 0. 5 will not be equal to up. It will be equal to left. And so we need to change that direction to 180. We'll come down to the next one, and instead of forward down, this will be forward and right. We can change the variable direction to 0. And since there won't be an object barrier on the right, we can get rid of this as well as these blocks. So now that should clean it up, and we just have test 1 out of 2, go variable, direction 0, and exit the event. The next one down is going to be forward and left, which means that instead of 90, we want to change this to 180. Come down to the next one, and instead of up and down, we will say this is left and right. So 270 will be changed to 0, and 90 will be changed to 180. Come down to the three-way, and we can leave all this as is, but when we get down to the variable direction 90, change this to 0, change 270 to 180. And so finally, if there is none, then we can still just add 180 to its current direction. And finally, let's make note that instead of ending the horizontal movement, this is the vertical movement. So this is a huge block of actions now. Definitely want to make sure that everything has been done correctly. If you need to, watch the video again. Now we can test the game. And when we start, the ghosts move and they start wandering about the maze. And if we wanted to prove that they would not go back in the ghost house, we can reopen the room level one. And come to our objects, select our object wall, and just place some temporary walls to sort of enclose them and close the room, run the game again, and now they should just be stuck going back and forth, but they never choose to go down. So I'll reopen this room and get rid of those, and I can close the room again. If you sit and watch the ghosts for a while, you will notice that they never go backwards, that they are always moving forward in one direction or another. But you can give them some bias as to which directions they will go by tweaking some of these things, giving them preference to go towards one direction or another. And if you were going to do that, instead of putting this step event in the object ghost parent, you would probably just put all of that individually into each one it still wouldn't be as sophisticated as the original Pac-Man's movement algorithms, but I think this does the job. So now that the ghosts are moving around the maze, we can set up the mechanisms for allowing our Pac-Man to eat the ghosts.